people have suggested that you are bailing out now because this state is trending Republican and it would be very difficult for you to win re-election again. They're they, they exactly right. They're exactly right. And uh, let me tell you that that was the way it was in 1980. We had a Republican sweep. In 1986, we had a Republican sweep. In 1992, we had a Republican sweep. <laughs> Fritz Hollings never lost but one race in his entire 58 years of public service. When Fritz Hollings was 30 years old, he was eminently good looking and he had a personality that would just light up a room. Fritz has a, a tongue attached to a brain that's entwined in, in a combative spirit, which means that when you go head to head with Fritz Hollings, you lose yours. He's the kind of guy that you wanted in a political foxhole, just as he had spent time in the foxholes of World War II himself. But Senator Hollins was an officer in the Army. Uh, he was in North Africa and in uh, Europe. He was one of those American heroes that served in World War II, and he was part of that energetic group of young men who came back from the war and decided to stay home and make a difference where they came from. He was 36 years old when he was elected governor of South Carolina. As governor, he wrote the book on governing in the New South. We all have a mutual challenge, one mutual goal, and that is for South Carolina to provide the best opportunity for all its citizens. He literally grabbed the state by the scruff of its neck in the 50s and pushed us into the 20th century. His vision for tech schools as a way of training South Carolina workers was a new, bright, visionary idea. When I became governor, the problem was to get jobs for the people. Today, the task is to get people for the jobs. For this, we must be skilled. Part of Hollins's vision was the fact that the technical education system needed to be in place in order to make South Carolina attractive for uh, the recruitment of industry. This project that he started with our technical colleges and attraction of new, sophisticated, high-tech industry has changed the state dramatically. Fritz Hollings took an extraordinary, bold, and courageous uh, action in the 1960 campaign by uh, supporting John Kennedy for the presidency, a Catholic, at a time when it was not really a politically a popular thing for him to do. I remember that uh, after President Kennedy was lost and Governor Hollings came up to pay tribute and uh, to President Kennedy who was resting in the uh, rotunda and of course he, having been such a strong supporter and really a friend of President Kennedy and the family could have really gone to the head of the line. Instead, he stood out there in the public all night long. Uh, kind of an indicator of uh, the quality of the individual. I first became aware of uh, this uh, young uh, Southern leader of a rather remarkable posture and uh, command bearing uh, when he stood up for Jack Kennedy, but even more so uh, as governor when the neighboring states of Alabama and Mississippi were bloody battlefields in the fight for civil rights. And Fritz Hollings made sure that his state of South Carolina moved forward uh, without bloodshed. Hollings' uh, position was uh, that we had run out of courts uh, and that uh, Clemson would be integrated and it would be done peacefully. Uh, and that set the tone for the entire state and it was accomplished peacefully. One of the principal difficulties we had then was that people were hungry, children were hungry, adults were hungry, they couldn't get jobs, they couldn't make enough money to buy sufficient food. Some 49,000 welfare families and only 19,000, as Dr. Ellis will tell you, participating in the food stamps. Through Senator Holling's so-called poverty tour, he shocked people into action. It took leadership, it took guts to do that. It was not a popular thing to do. It's not a surprise at all that uh, we do have poverty, but uh, the housing conditions here are 
no less than shocking. As a co-founder of the WIC program, he has had a tremendous impact on healthy children, uh, healthy moms and families. When I think of women, infant and children, that's a Hollings idea, coastal zone management, Hollings idea, uh, certainly the issue of jobs, uh, trade issues. Uh, no one was a better voice on behalf of working people in, uh, in public life than Fritz Hollings has been. As a senior member of the Senate Commerce Committee, he saw the future of telecommunications before a lot of Americans knew what surfing the internet meant. He was in the forefront of the movement to protect America's oceans in the early 1970s. The senator was a very, very strong supporter of some major, major pieces of legislation, whether it was the Marine Mammal Protection Act, the Endangered Species Act, at a time where it was not really a, a topic which was very popular. He was a champion of the ocean. I think you have to look at the themes that have emerged in the uh, Highlands senatorial arena. Surpluses, 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 surplus, surplus, surplus everywhere. It's in growth, growth, the growth, growth. Cut the taxes, cut the taxes, cut the taxes. It's tax cuts, tax cuts. I'll jump off the Capitol Dome if this budget is balanced. For the last 20 years, he's been uh, way ahead of his time on issues that really matter. Uh, uh, on uh, fiscal responsibility, he has been a voice, frequently a lonely voice. The deficit now, for six presidents, cumulatively, add them all up, those deficits are 358 billion. There is no one who has been a fiercer defender of fiscal responsibility than Fritz Hollings. You know, I tell the story with uh, just some of these charts depicted behind me. Uh, we've done literally hundreds of charts to try to make the point, but Fritz has only needed one, and here it is. This is the Fritz Hollings memorable chart. The best campaign finance trick is to use the government's budget to get ourselves reelected. Run around promising visions of sugar plums dancing in their heads. Just give the money back. The people know how to spend their money. Tirade would be a good word for him when it comes to budgetary matters because he really is passionate about this and really kind of beats us over the head on trying to balance the budget. I think the senator has been a powerful voice for fiscal sanity in this country. And regrettably, he's one of very few who have consistently held that position over the years. Remember that he was a co-author of the Graham Redmond Hollings Deficit Reduction Act of 1985. Phil, Warren, and Fritz, you who have given your names to the Graham Redmond Hollings Bill also deserve our congratulations. From now on, when the public hears the names Graham, Rudman, or Hollings, they'll think deficit reduction. That set the stage for a whole series of changes which led to the rules in later budget documents, which I suspect were a powerful force in reducing the deficit and eventually creating a surplus. It's interesting in covering the presidential campaign this year uh, to see candidates uh, almost awaken to what had been his clarion call about jobs leaving this country. And this was a constant refrain of his during the 80s or the early 90s that you know we have to pay attention to our manufacturing base. We're losing our manufacturing base. We can't let it go outside this country. And time has proven him right. Peachy Hollings has had more to do with his success personally and politically than any single individual I can name. Whatever Peetzee says is the law, and you can take it to the bank. Mr. Hollings, as a teacher, I'm deeply concerned about the uh, lack of emphasis on education. She's his biggest cheerleader. She's also his conscience. She keeps him honest. She focuses him. She's the only one sometimes that can maybe put a little pin in the balloon when he needs that. Fritz once said, you know, that the reason he and Peetzee got along so well together because they were both in love with the same man. <laughs> he could always bring a smile or a laugh even uh, to an issue that was very serious, that he intended to get past.
So I remember covering the campaign uh, when he ran for president up in New Hampshire, and he had a little problem in that he did not seem to speak the same language to people in New Hampshire. They didn't seem to understand one thing he said. I remember one day we were all came into this room where somebody had uh, baked a cake uh, in the shape of the White House. And Hollings called all the reporters over and said, boys, take a good look at it. This is as close as old Fritz is ever going to get to the White House. You know, my favorite story, of course, uh, was back, I guess it was the 86 campaign, when we had all of these dreadful uh, challenges during the campaign for people to take drug tests. And he said, I'll take a drug test if he'll take an IQ test. And uh, no tests were taken. Senator Hollings and I have been uh you know, adversaries, but friends over the years. We sort of watched each other grow up in the Senate. He was hoping to be senior senator, which he now is. I think he holds the record for that, the longest serving senator with the name Junior attached to his name. When you see Fritz Hollings, you see a real senator. There are no focus groups that prepared him. There's no poll in his back pocket. Fritz Hollings has something to say. He's going to say it. The Congress and the government is dedicated to the campaign and not the country. I can tell you that right now. You can't get anything done. Senator Hollings' whole political uh, foundation, the whole core of who he was, was that he told the truth. And people came to expect that. We got to change the culture in Washington. It's an outright money chase, both sides, totally partisan, nothing gets done. Fritz uh, speaks his mind, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, says what he believes and believes what he says. You know, Fritz, uh, counting you, there's only uh, five guys been here longer than me now. So I've watched uh, 94 guys and women leave the Senate since I've come. I'm not going to miss anybody uh, like I'm going to miss you. The Senate will not be the same without that great booming voice holding forth about the debt level and the problems that we face. and just challenging everybody to come on, let's get to business and solve these problems. I don't think anybody is indispensable, but I think Fritz comes as close to that as almost anybody I know. Now the Senate will go on, but it's gonna be a slightly drearier place. January 24th, 1999, one of the most important questions asked ever in the history of Meet the Press. I have heard you use a phrase for the last 20 years, the ox is in the ditch. What does that mean? <laughs> when the ox gets there, he can't get himself, itself out, uh, and neither can the driver of the wagon like us all here. We've got to pull together to really correct what's wrong. I finally got an answer. <laughs> Senator Hollings. The ox is in the ditch right now. And with your leaving the U.S. Senate, Senator, the Senate is going to be in the ditch. 37 terrific years. And only if they all pull together will they ever equal the contributions of Ernest Fritz Hollings.